then all of a sudden I just heard this little scuffle. So I thought, oh, it's somebody coming in my house, you know. And uh, so I got out of bed gently and just put the wardrobe to back the door, which was too late then. They'd already been in bedroom. Crime is something we all have to deal with in today's society. It's a growing problem. In fact, there's every possibility that you yourself may have experienced first-hand crime in one shape or form. Even if you've never been a victim, you probably know someone who has. For many of us, crime, or the threat of crime, is an all-too-familiar prospect. Perhaps your car's been broken into or stolen. Your home may have been burgled. If you're concerned, there are things you can do to help prevent crime. In the course of this video, I'll be giving you practical advice on making yourself, your family, and your property more secure. Coming up in Safe and Sound, caring for those closest to you, positive ways of protecting the more vulnerable members of the family. Finding out how women can keep themselves safe when they're out and about on their own. Looking at ways of making your home as safe as houses. Protecting your most vulnerable possessions. And helping improve the security of your neighborhood. We'll also be getting expert advice from a man whose business is crime prevention. As we all know, crime is often on everyone's mind. But that doesn't mean we're helpless to do anything about it. As you're about to find out, there are all sorts of positive measures we can all take. Firstly, though, it might be helpful to put crime into perspective. Most of us are more afraid of violent crime than anything else. But it might reassure you to know that most crime is not against people, it's against property. And in the main, crimes are not carried out by professionals. In most cases, they're the work of opportunists. Now, if we can reduce these opportunities, or even eliminate them altogether, we'll be making a significant contribution to crime prevention. For instance, as much as 90% of car crime stems from easy opportunities. Drivers leaving their vehicles unlocked. Ever done that? The same is true of domestic burglaries. In around 30% of cases, the householder makes it easy for the thief by leaving a door or window open. And just imagine how much more difficult life would be for the criminal if everyone took the time to secure their property. Yeah, it might seem obvious, but many people simply don't bother. And often it's straightforward measures like these that can help make all aspects of our lives safer and more secure. Let's tackle the subject of personal safety. Although we've already mentioned that the chances of you or a member of your family becoming a victim of violence are relatively low, there are still things you can do to reduce the risk even further. The best advice is to avoid potentially dangerous situations whenever you can. There'll be times when you're going to feel vulnerable. In those situations, what can you do? If you're out on your own after dark, be alert and aware of your surroundings. Stick to well-lit and busy areas if possible, and don't use shortcuts that will take you into dark, out-of-the-way places. Walk close to the curb, away from buildings which could offer cover to an attacker. Always walk facing the traffic to reduce the chance of a vehicle approaching you from behind. If you can, carry a torch. Never hitchhike or accept a lift, however tempting. Keep your keys in your hand so that you can get into your house quickly. You might also feel more secure by carrying a small personal alarm. Keep it handy. If you have to be out alone after dark, 
You may feel safer using a taxi, but always make sure you're getting into an accredited cab. Check that the cab has a plate with its license number on the outside of the vehicle. There should also be one on the dashboard. The driver should be wearing an ID badge with his photo. Always sit behind him. And if you feel uneasy, ask him to drop you off in a busy, well-lit area and do not give any personal details other than necessary. If you have any doubts, don't get into the car in the first place. Some unlicensed operators are simply out to make a bit of cash on the side. Others may be trying to pick up women for much more sinister reasons. If you have your own car, you may already feel reasonably safe even traveling alone at night. Even so, it's still a good idea to take a few simple steps to make yourself even more secure. Plan your journey. Let someone know when you're leaving and what time you're due to arrive. Make sure you've got enough petrol and that your vehicle's well maintained. Have some change ready in case you need to stop and make a phone call. And before you get into your car, check the interior, especially the back seat. Keep valuables out of sight and keep your doors locked. Opportunist thieves may well be tempted by the sight of a handbag on the passenger seat. It's all too easy to open a door and snatch a bag while you're stuck in traffic. It's important to get into the habit of locking your car while you're inside it. It's only too easy for someone to climb in otherwise. If you feel you're being followed, head for a police station or attract attention by sounding the horn and flashing your lights. It may seem callous, but don't be tempted to stop, even if you think someone needs help. They may well be genuine, but it's safer to keep driving and find a police officer rather than stop yourself. And don't ever pick up hitchhikers. When you're parking your car, always look for a secure car park. Reverse into the bay so that you can drive off quickly if you need to. Carry your keys when you return to the car so that you can get in quickly. Multi-story car parks may look fine in daylight, but they can be threatening at night. If you use one, choose a parking bay that's well lit, close to the staircase, and on one of the lower floors, so you don't have too far to walk. Of course, however carefully you drive, and however well you look after your car, there's a possibility it may break down. If it does, you may be fortunate enough to have time to drive it to a public place. And if you can't, switch on your hazard warning lights. Set up a reflective triangle if you have one. And think about carrying a help call police notice. If someone stops to offer you assistance, stay in your vehicle and keep the doors locked. Open the driver's window just an inch or so and ask them to contact the police or a rescue service. Breaking down on the motorway is different. Pull over onto the hard shoulder and try to make it to one of the emergency phones. Use the marker posts at the side of the road to work out how far away the next phone is. There are phones at one mile intervals along both sides of the carriageway. Don't ever cross the carriageway to get to a phone. While you're making the call, leave your passenger door open and the rest of your vehicle, doors and windows, locked. That way, you'll be able to get back into your car quickly if you're approached by someone and feel threatened. All calls from motorway SOS phones are connected to the police. Tell them you're on your own, and you'll find all the motoring organizations will give you priority. While you are waiting for help to arrive, sit in the passenger seat. This gives the impression that you're not alone but simply waiting for the driver to return. So far, we've looked at ways of staying safe when you're out and about. Everyday situations familiar to many women. But what about when you're at home? You can improve your peace of mind by making your home more secure. Fit a chain and a door viewer to the front door. If you live alone, don't use your full name on your door plate or in the phone book. Use initials instead. Many people have experienced at one time or another 
malicious phone calls. They're unpleasant and upsetting and can cause extreme distress. If you find yourself on the receiving end, try to stay calm and follow this basic advice. Never give your number when you answer the phone, even if a caller asks for it. Instead, ask which number they've dialed. Never give away information about yourself. And never tell a caller you're at home alone. If malicious calls become a nuisance, you can get help from British Telecom. They may change your number, intercept your calls, or trace the calls when necessary. In the fact file coming up at the end of this section, we'll give you the number to ring if you need help. Now, all the advice so far is about what women can do to improve their security. But men can help too. Once you recognize that women may be nervous or afraid when they're out alone, you can take steps to ensure that you don't add to their fear. Don't create the impression you're following a lone woman. Reassure her by crossing the road rather than walking close behind her. Don't strike up a conversation with a woman waiting on her own at a bus stop. She's likely to feel threatened. Don't sit too close to a woman travelling alone on public transport. Statistically, the chances of being attacked are slim. But if the worst happens and you are confronted by an attacker, well, what then? Now, it's not something any of us likes to think about, but it's important to prepare yourself. It might just give you a split-second advantage over your attacker. Make as much noise as you can. Shout and scream. Even if there's no one nearby, your attacker may be scared off. If you are attacked and you feel able to fight back, use whatever reasonable force you can. If you're carrying keys or an umbrella, you're entitled to use them. If you are a victim, if you need help to deal with malicious phone calls, or you've been attacked, there are organizations who can help. Details coming up now. Older people are vulnerable too. And any attack on an elderly person is particularly disturbing. Now, such attacks are rare, although there remains a real fear that this kind of crime is on the increase. Hopefully, by taking practical steps to make elderly people more secure, we can help allay some of those fears. You can help elderly relatives or neighbours by making their homes safer. Offer to fit additional locks and chains. Install a door viewer in the door. In some areas, pensioners may be able to get financial assistance for this kind of work. Your local home watch or crime prevention officer will be able to advise you. Once their home is secure, elderly people are in a far better position to deal with unexpected or unwanted callers. Can I see your credentials, please? Always keep the chain on the door when you answer and always check the credentials of callers. Even if they're claiming to represent official bodies like the electricity board or the police, you should still ask for identification. If you're in any doubt, take a number and ring their office to make sure. And don't open the door unless you're certain the call is genuine. Remember, don't keep large sums of money in the house. It's safer in a bank, post office or building society. If you're a parent, you'll no doubt feel that children today are facing graver dangers than ever before. And it's hardly surprising parents are worried when every day we hear stories of appalling cruelty to children. It's vital then that youngsters learn about staying safe, something many schools now teach as a matter of course. 
The threats to children may come from people they know or from total strangers. In any event, there are some basic rules they must become aware of at an early age. Younger children, particularly, need to be made aware of stranger danger. Teach your children not to talk to strangers, not to accept anything, sweets or money, or the offer of a lift from someone they don't know. Make sure your children tell you where they're going, who they'll be with, and what time they'll be back. Encourage them to talk to you. Make sure they know they can tell you if someone has approached them. It's important they know they won't be in trouble. Teach them to approach a police officer if they become lost. Of course, it's not only the dangers posed by strangers that we need to be aware of. Sometimes children are abused by people who know them and their family well. That's why it's important the children know they can talk to you if they're being pushed into a situation they're unhappy about. Our fact file has some useful contacts if you need further advice on this difficult subject. As your children get older, you may find they're facing a whole new set of pressures and problems. Problems which can cause you as a parent just as much anxiety as you felt when they were younger. Keeping older children safe may mean protecting them from alcohol or drug abuse, subjects many parents may find difficult to deal with. Teenagers may experiment by drinking too much, or using drugs, or getting involved in solvent abuse. Be aware of telltale signs. If your child starts taking drugs, you may notice mood swings, or loss of appetite, lack of interest in school, friends, or hobbies. Money may disappear from the house. Stains or marks may appear on their clothes. You may find powders, tablets, burnt tin foil, or needles. If your child's taking drugs, they may resort to other crimes, such as shoplifting to pay for them. Drugs also expose them to serious dangers, side effects such as hallucinations, infections. If you're concerned, the number of organizations who can help are coming up in our fact file next. So far in Safe and Sound, we've looked at personal security, safeguarding yourself and your family. Now we're going to move on and look at ways of protecting the home. Unfortunately, break-ins are something many householders have had to come to terms with. The aftermath of this kind of crime can be traumatic. So let's look at some ways of improving home security and making our property less attractive to opportunist thieves. <laughs> Burglars like an easy target. They are looking for a quick and easy way into your home. An open window, an unlocked door. These are open invitations to the opportunist thief. It's worth remembering that in three burglaries out of ten, the thief doesn't have to use force to get in. Not surprisingly, burglars don't like secure houses. So, let's go through a checklist of things you can do to make your home more secure. 
front and back doors should be solid. The back door is more likely to be targeted by a burglar, so make sure it has a deadlock fitted. Choose a five-lever mortise lock to British standard with the kite mark. The chances of a burglar having a key to fit this are about one in a thousand. Fit the same kind of lock to the front door. Additional bolts plus a chain and door viewer also improve security. Fit key operated locks to all ground floor windows and to first floor windows which overlook an extension or garage roof and may give a burglar easy access. Patio doors often provide an easy way in and need special locks top and bottom. Consider installing security lighting. No would-be burglar wants to find himself standing in a pool of bright light. Finally, an alarm system acts as a visible deterrent. Your local crime prevention officer can advise you on a system suitable for your property. Your home is specially vulnerable when you're not there. If you're going to be away, on holiday or business, it's worth investing in time switches to turn your lights on after dark. You can buy them from DIY shops. Since 8 out of 10 burglaries take place when the house is unoccupied, it's worth making a small effort to create the impression there's someone at home. If you can, ask a neighbour to keep an eye on the place for you. Make sure you cancel your newspapers and milk. Seeing them pile up on the doorstep is a dead giveaway to a thief. This is the kind of thing, small, portable and valuable, that thieves are likely to take. One way of making items such as TVs, hi-fis and video recorders less attractive to thieves is to security mark them with an indelible ID using your postcode and the number of your house. The marking makes it harder for a thief to sell and easier for the police to return the item to you if it's found. You'll find property marking kits in DIY stores. Now, it's all very well fitting secure locks and chains, but it's equally important to ensure you can leave your home quickly in the event of emergency such as a fire. Now, fire in the home is potentially one of the most dangerous situations you and your family could find yourself in. But there are a few simple steps you can take to reduce the risk. The main cause of fire in the home are carelessly discarded smoking materials, such as cigarette ends, etc. Uh, fires involving cooking and cookers, children playing with matches, and the improper or careless use of portable domestic heaters. The fire service attends uh, many incidents in a year involving cookers and cooking. Uh, one of the more frequent uh, ones that we attend is the chip pan fire. Um, probably about one in four of all cooking incidents that we go to involves an injury, so it's uh, quite a serious problem. People should remember that if they're using a chip pan, they should try to keep it less than one third full of fat or oil. They should always dry off the chips before they use them. They should not allow the fat to overheat and certainly never to leave the pans unattended. Should they get a fire involving a chip pan, they should leave it in place not advisable to move the pan at all. If it's safe to do so, they should turn off the heat. They should take a tea towel that's been wet, wring out the excess water and place it over the pan and leave it to cool for 30 minutes. The biggest cause of fatalities in domestic fires in this country is, is the carelessly discarded smoking materials, particularly people smoking in bed. We would always advocate that where possible people use an ashtray they must smoke and to make sure at night before they go to bed that they tip out the ashtray into a suitable container and check round the furniture to make sure that no cigarette ends have got themselves wedged in behind cushions etc. The best thing a family can do to protect themselves from fire is to provide themselves with a smoke alarm. Statistics show us that your chances of surviving a fire in the home are greatly improved by providing a smoke alarm correctly fitted in your property. The other thing you can do is to get the family together and formulate an escape plan. Work out just what you would do in case of a fire to get your family and yourself out safely. 
If you do discover a fire, the most important thing is to get the family together. Wake them up if necessary. We mustn't forget that the most serious fires do start at night. When you've got everyone together, make your way safely out of the premises without opening unnecessary doors. It's not really viable to start investigating the fire at this stage. Ceiling temperatures can quite easily reach 1,000 degrees centigrade in three minutes in a domestic fire. So you know, once you've got everyone outside, you need to telephone the fire service and stay out until they arrive. The role of the fire service, of course, is to save life from fire, to save property from fire, and to render humanitarian services to anyone, anywhere, at any time. The fire service also offers free advice on any aspect of fire safety in the home. Apart from your home, your car is probably your most valuable possession. It's also likely to be your most vulnerable possession. Each year, more than 460,000 cars are reported stolen in Britain. Many of those are never recovered. And a large number of those that do turn up are severely damaged. Thefts of cars and thefts from cars account for over a quarter of all recorded crime. Yet it's estimated that as much as 90% of car crimes stem from easy opportunities. Now here's how you can make life more difficult for the car thief. If you're buying a new car, put security high on your list of priorities. Ask about anti-theft features. Does the car have central locking? Is there an alarm fitted? Is the radio cassette player security coded? It's worth etching your registration mark on all the windows, wing mirrors and lights. Your garage can do this for you, or you can do it yourself. If you're buying a second-hand car, beware of being sold a stolen vehicle. If you're trawling through the classified ads, be cautious of those offering only a mobile telephone number, which may not be traceable. Arrange to view the vehicle at the vendor's house. Don't be persuaded to meet them at another location. Make sure that the vendor is the registered keeper and that their documents are in order. Check over the car to make sure the vehicle identification plate matches the registration document. You can arrange for one of the motoring organizations to carry out a full check before you buy. You can also protect your car by being careful about where you leave it. If you have a garage at home, use it. If you're using a car park, look for one that's well supervised with a restricted exit. Never leave your ticket in your car. Always lock your car, even if you're only leaving it for a few minutes. Keep valuables out of sight. Either take them with you or lock them in the boot. And if you have a radio cassette that's designed to be removed, Take that with you, too. Now, how would you manage if you lost your purse or wallet? It's, it's not just the money, but the inconvenience of losing check and credit cards, too. If your cards are stolen, let the credit card company know straight away. If you don't, you may be liable for some of the bills the thief has cheerfully been running up in your name. Don't keep your personal identification number, your PIN, with your card. And never keep your checkbook and guarantee cards together. And if you have this many cards, it's probably worth insuring them with a company who can cancel the lot for you if they're stolen. Your credit card company can advise you. Cheshire saw the very first neighbourhood watch scheme launched in 1982. Now there are more than 100,000 schemes throughout the country, taking in more than 4 million households. Over the years, Homewatch has become a well-established part of crime prevention, a means of improving the sense of safety and security among the community. The scheme works by encouraging people to look out for one another, to note suspicious behaviour, and 
to report anything worrying to the police. The schemes are very much a partnership between the police and the community, and right from the outset, officers will offer guidance and advice to residents keen to start up their own scheme locally. Being part of Homewatch means you know other people are looking out for you, and you for them. Through newsletters and meetings, you'll be kept in touch with what's happening in your community. And if you need advice on crime prevention, you'll already have established a relationship with your local police officer. If this sounds like a good idea for your neighborhood, talk to your local crime prevention officer. And that's just what we're going to do, because with me is Mike Farrell, who is a crime prevention officer with the Greater Manchester Police Force. Mike, just how valuable in your experience are these home watch schemes? Home watch schemes can be very valuable in the fight against crime and in particular in the fight against uh, the opportunist type of burglar. I think we should mention at this stage though that the, the home watch schemes we just referred to, although in Greater Manchester we do refer to them as home watch, uh, generally in other parts of the country they are normally referred to as neighbourhood watch. Mm -hmm. Some parts of the country refer to them as community watch but they all mean exactly the same thing and they're all based on exactly the same principle but they can be very valuable if they are run properly. Some home watch groups are run very, very well enthusiastically and quite professionally as well. Those are the groups that will see uh, certainly um, the possibilities of some success. The difficulty, as I see it, is that I can very easily start a home watch group. I can go into an area and I can speak to people who are obviously concerned about having their homes broken into. Um, I can quite easily convince them that a home watch group will be a good idea and something they should sort of consider very, very seriously. They will all take me up on, on my recommendations and they will all take readily to my advice. The thing, I suppose, the most important aspect is, will they still be as interested in six months' time? Mm. Will the interest for their group still be there in 12 months' time? A good coordinator is essential to the good running of the scheme. The coordinator, I suppose we may describe as a link person between the actual group and their local police. What about the problem of bogus callers? The bogus callers may be somebody who knocks on a door and may purport to be from uh, the water board or the, the local sort of the council, whatever type of excuse they use in just an attempt to get through our front doors. And what measures can the, the home watch group take to protect themselves against bogus callers? Certainly, if, from a starting point, Martin, I would say that uh, an awareness from their local police, a home watch group will start off with meetings with the local police. Maybe the local crime prevention officer, maybe it's what we, we, we sometimes refer to as their watch coordinator or watch administrator who will assist them. If we can pass on to them uh, an awareness of local crime, uh, the types of habits that burglars have, the types of things they will do, the ways they will try and get into their homes, then we are forewarning them and perhaps forearming them uh, for any future type of problems. It's worth bearing in mind, I think, that uh, certainly, as far as the opportunist burglar is concerned, the vast majority of cases, he is looking for an empty home to break into. These are his targets. There are lots of things that will tell an opportunist burglar that a house is empty. You know, like the old tried and tested things like milk on doorsteps and newspapers sticking out of letterboxes and that type of thing. But at the end of it all, all he has to do is to walk up to somebody's front door. If he doesn't get an answer, then of course he's found an empty house and he's then very quickly around the back looking for a way of breaking in. Mm -hmm. It just may be that when he knocks on somebody's front door, that a householder is in fact in and answers the door to him. Then he's got to sound plausible, he's got to say something to them. Uh, obviously, he, just can't, he, he can't just uh, turn around and walk away because he, de he then becomes suspicious. Mm. So he's ready for the eventuality of somebody answering the, the door to him, so he will have some sort of little reason up his sleeve or a little excuse up his sleeve. And there's a variety of reasons they will use. Then he will say things like, um, I've just started a window cleaning business perhaps and I'll come every, every fortnight and I charge you £5.50. Um, I see your drive could do with tarmac in for a reasonable price, I'll do your drive for you. Or a couple of loose slates on your roof for a reasonable price, I'll do your roof for you. It can be a host, an absolute host of little reasons. And my message to a home watch group, or to anyone for that matter, is that if they get that type of caller on their doorstep, is not to just to dismiss them, not just to say no thank you very much and, and close the door on them, but just bear in mind that there was a possibility that they've just been talking to their would-be burglar. And as a home watch organisation is concerned, I would say make a note of what he looked like, what's his height, the colour of his hair, his age, his general description, 
pass that information on to your own coordinator and the coordinator will then ensure that that information is passed on to the local police. Mike, we talked earlier about uh, women when they're broken down in their cars, putting up these help call police signs. How effective are they? There was in actual fact an evaluation made of the help call police notice and the evaluation was actually carried out by leaving a lone woman motorist sitting in her vehicle on the hard shoulder or alongside a busy dual carriageway. Um, they left her sitting there for an hour. Uh, during that hour there was over a thousand vehicles passed uh, and out of those thousand vehicles there wasn't a single offer of assistance. In the second hour um, they moved her further down the road and the rear window they placed the help call police notice. During that second hour there was approximately uh, 800 vehicles went past. Out of those 800 vehicles that went, that went past, during that hour, the local police received over 30 treble nine calls, emergency calls. Seven people actually stopped passing police patrols to report what they'd seen. About three people actually stopped and went back to, her to, off to offer some assistance. Um, and um, there were about 14 or 15 telephone calls made by a national line to local police stations. In all, certainly, the figure the Office of Assistance came to well over 50 for the hour that she was sitting there with the help call police notice placed in the rear windscreen. So I think really that evaluation speaks very, very loudly for the fact that we should recommend that type of notice wherever possible. Now going back to one of our earlier topics of discussion, there is obviously a, a real fear of violent crime, but how important is it to put this into perspective? One of the best ways we can, we can get things into perspective is by looking at crime in general. If we look at crime as an overall type of figure, we can say that out of all the crimes that are reported, 94% of those crimes relate to crimes against property, which leaves a, a rough figure of 6% of crimes that are actually crimes against the person, you know, whether it's a minor assault through to a more serious assault. Uh, but there's only 6% roughly that, is, uh, that are attacks against the person. Mike, thank you very much. And that's all from us. But remember, there is something that you can do to help prevent crime and to keep the people and property you value safe and sound. And all of a sudden I just heard this little scuffle. So I thought, oh, it's somebody coming in my house, you know. And uh, so I got out of bed gently and just took the wardrobe to back the door, which was too late then. They'd already been in bed. Crime is something we all have to deal with in today's society. It's a growing problem. In fact, there's every possibility that you yourself may have experienced first-hand crime in one shape or form. Even if you've never been a victim, you probably know someone who has. For many of us, crime, or the threat of crime, is an all too familiar prospect. Perhaps you would. We'll also be getting expert advice from a man whose business is crime prevention. As we all know, crime is often on everyone's mind. But that doesn't mean we're helpless to do anything about it. As you're about to find out, there are all sorts of positive measures we can all take. Firstly, though, it might be helpful to put crime into perspective. Most of us 
are more afraid of violent crime than anything else. But it might reassure you to know that most crime is not against people, it's against property. And in the main, crimes are not carried out by professionals. In most cases, they're the work of opportunists. Now, if we can reduce these opportunities, or even eliminate them altogether, we'll be making a significant contribution to crime prevention. Becoming a victim of violence are relatively low. There are still things you can do to reduce the risk even further. The best advice is to avoid potentially dangerous situations whenever you can. There'll be times when you're going to feel vulnerable. In those situations, what can you do? If you're out on your own after dark, be alert and aware of your surroundings. Stick to well-lit and busy areas if possible, and don't use shortcuts that will take you into dark, out-of-the-way places. Walk close to the curb, away from buildings which could offer cover to an attacker. Always walk facing the traffic. If your car's been broken into or stolen, your home may have been burgled. If you're concerned, there are things you can do to help prevent crime. In the course of this video, I'll be giving you practical advice on making yourself, your family, and your property more secure. Coming up in Safe and Sound, caring for those closest to you, positive ways of protecting the more vulnerable members of the family, finding out how women can keep themselves safe when they're out and about on their own, looking at ways of making your home as safe as houses, protecting your most vulnerable possessions, and helping improve the security of your neighbor. For instance, as much as 90% of car crime stems from easy opportunities. Drivers leaving their vehicles unlocked. Ever done that? The same is true of domestic burglaries. In around 30% of cases, the householder makes it easy for the thief by leaving a door or window open. And just imagine how much more difficult life would be for the criminal if everyone took the time to secure their property. Yeah, it might seem obvious, but many people simply don't bother. And often it's straightforward measures like these that can help make all aspects of our lives safer and more secure. Let's tackle the subject of personal safety. Although we've already mentioned that the chances of you or a member of your family